Want more from your tire store? You've got it. Bridgestone Firestone in Los Alamitos, where the rubber meets the road. Tires are just part of our service. Our ASE certified mechanics use the latest in computer diagnostics to maintain your car, truck, import, or domestic. Struts, shocks, steering and linkage, wheel alignment, tie rods, and ball joints. Types of scheduled maintenance might include tune-ups, oil changes, brakes and cooling system service, electrical repair for batteries and alternator, and of course, tires. With a wide assortment of tires to choose from, remember that mounting is always included. Bridgestone Firestone will dispose of your old tires properly and even repair your flat. Bridgestone Firestone is located at 11121 Los Alamitos Boulevard, one block south of Catella Avenue. Our hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays, and on Sunday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For additional savings, see and use our coupons found in these fine publications. For all your car care needs, remember it's Bridgestone Firestone in Los Alamitos, America's tire since 1900. Visit Green Street Interiors and make your holiday shopping a pleasant experience. We have gifts for every member of the family and decorations to make your holiday festive and unique. Enjoy a peaceful shopping experience away from busy, crowded malls. And remember, the gift wrapping is free. Green Street Interiors is located at 11132 Los Alamitos Boulevard in Los Alamitos. Or call us at 598-8694. Cap Shuey Field on the campus of Huntington Beach High School. It's the Los Alamitos Griffins versus the Huntington Beach Oilers on HBTV3's Game of the Week. Well, fall has finally arrived here in Huntington Beach. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Sinclair along with Mike Berline to bring you tonight's action on HBTV3's Game of the Week featuring the Los Alamitos Griffins and the Huntington Beach Oilers. At one time, the Los Alamitos Griffins were the number one high school football team in the country. And Huntington Beach certainly has their work cut out for them tonight. Mike? Absolutely. Los Alamitos comes in as the number two ranked team in the county off a very impressive victory last week against Fountain Valley. They defeated the Barons 25 to 7. They have a potent passing attack led by Kevin Federick, the number one rated passer in the county. Look for the ball to be flying through the air when Los Al has it. And on defense for Los Al, their defense is just, they're big guys, big guys, and big guys. For Huntington Beach, I think uh, we're going to see some things from Pasco. We saw them last week against Edison. He's just not going to come in here at an, with an 0-3 in league and uh, lay down for this team. I think we're in for some excitement and trying to keep our hands on who's going to be playing quarterback and what different, different positions. What do you think we're going to get to see tonight? Well, I think we'll see more of the same. Last week, even though Huntington Beach is still looking for their first league victory, they let it all out of the bag last week. Sure they uh, gave Edison a run for their money. It was 19-16 defeat, perhaps their most difficult defeat of the season, but probably their best effort. If they can play like that behind the rushing attack led by Jason Lachlan, then they could give Losal a good ball game tonight. And we don't want to forget the foot of, of Brent Chancellor, who is a terrific field goal kicker. And if they can get close, they just might get lucky and keep this game as exciting as we hope it is. Now we're about ready for the kickout, but we're going to go back down on the field for an interview with Gary Pitts. Gary, take it away. I'm with Jerry Help, and, and Jerry, you know, you guys have an outstanding football program out there. You've won a lot of games in the last three or four years, and you're pretty much undefeated. What do you think about tonight's game? Oh, well, I think uh, we're going to be pretty well prepared. We had a tough one a couple of weeks ago over at Esperanza, and last week we re rebounded very well against a very, very good Fountain Valley team. I think uh, Huntington Beach is a, a real good football team, a little young. Um, I think that will probably prevail tonight. Um, I just hope nobody gets hurt. Now, what, what, what other type of athletic programs are you real strong over at La Salle? Well, I think we're really known for a lot of some of our girls' athletic programs. Our girls' tennis team, our girls' cross country team uh, are both uh, undefeated in the league this year. Um, our uh, girls' softball team is always very good. Our boys' basketball team, uh, those are probably our main sports. Uh, you have a, a lot of good kids over there, but w what's your uh, 
population or your uh, enrollment right now? Our enrollment right now is uh, 2,700 students, but that includes a little over 400 students in the Orange County High School of the Arts. And those kids uh, come to school at La Salle during the day for five periods and then take their performing arts classes after school. None of those kids are allowed to participate in athletics or anything like that. Well, you know, in Huntington Beach, we have up to some of them, I think the schools are running about 3,400, so we're, we're pretty much equal tonight. Yes, I think we are. I think we're, we're a little bigger, I think, than Huntington Beach, but that kind of goes with the flow. Some years we're up, some years we're down, and same thing with Huntington Beach High. Well, we're looking for a, for a good game tonight, and I want to thank you for being with us, and good luck in the game. Thank you, Gary, very much. Underway with the opening kickoff of the Huntington Beach Los Alamitos game. I'm Don Sinclair along with Mike Berline. We're just getting ready to start. And there's a the kickoff. It's a short sideline kick. And it looks like it's going to go out of bounds about the 30-yard line. And they may just do that one again. Huntington Beach looking for a good return here, a short kick. Uh, Huntington Beach obviously would like to draw first blood and uh, take the advantage as the underdog tonight. Okay, in any case, it'll be lost. Only procedure against the Oilers. That's what the ball is about. The ball is caught on the 35 yard line. They're saying that the ball was caught on the 35 yard line. It's an illegal procedure penalty, and Los Al will put it in play first and 10 on about the 35. This is a very, very strong team. Drop back, pass out to the side, keeps in bounds. That pass was to number 25. Stan Guinness, 6'3", 175 pounds senior. This was an All-American last year. Tremendous uh, prospect here. They've got some great receivers on this Losal Griffin team. He now. was all, all everything. That's Kevin Federick, the quarterback. Again, a sideline pass again, wide open. Taken there by Tony Hartley, and he's got a first down across midfield, and Los Al's underway. Kevin Federick, 6'2", 192-pound senior quarterback, came into this game leading Orange County in passing, completing almost 70% of his passes for almost 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Los Al's got three split out here to the right, single set. Hand off straight up the middle. This time it's stopped there by number 62, James Parker for Huntington Beach. And that was Tony Austin, number 16, the feature running back, 5'11", 184 pounds, senior. No, I, be a, uh, I believe that was Guinness. Was, was that Guinness single set there? That brings up a second and seven. We're just underway in the first quarter. Losal having the ball for the first time. Man in motion. Drop back, pass out here to the right, and it's going to go incomplete. Ball's intended there for Hartley. You know, Don, when you look at the passing statistics for the county, Federick is way ahead. He's got 211.5 points, the next closest quarterback rating person is from El Toro with 162.7. Just a dream season. Brings up a third and seven. Little reverse to Stan Guinness, and he's around. This time he's stopped there by the Huntington Beach. Does not pick up the third down, crucial third down. Good effort there on the part of the Huntington Beach defense to open the game and stop Los Al's drive. And that brings up a fourth down. A stop on the play by number 40, Jeff Bartuzic forces a punt here for the Griffins. That's Mike Phillips for Los Al, back to kick. And for Huntington Beach, that's David Van Horbeck deep for Huntington Beach. And there's a timeout. They want to make sure that they've got enough, the right count of players on the team. You know, Don Phillips doubles as the kicker as well for Los Al. Uh, you know a team is deep when they can have a specialist where the kicker or punter doesn't have to play another position. Phillips is a 5'11", 171-pound junior, so he'll be back next year. It looks like they've got just about every number covered on this sheet here for Los Al. They had to use a different size font to get it in on this one page. 
I know I'm using my binoculars here to, to uh, read this. Okay, the situation is fourth down. Huntington Beach has stopped Los Al in their first possession. The ball is at the 45 of Huntington Beach. Los Al to kick. It's a good catch. Van Horbeck's got signed up for a fair catch. He fumbles it, but I believe he's recovered his own fumble. So he's bobbled it and recovered it. Huntington Beach will put the ball first and 10 on their own 15. Now, we should see some interesting things. If, if Coach Pasco is up to his annex from last week, it's, we, we could see any, any formation. Donnie kept and us guessing. They came out with three quarterbacks in the first quarter alone with some very in inventive uh, formations. And he's going with his tight end, Bill Campbell, who is his, was his quarterback last week for part of the time, and he's opening the game with Campbell. It's a pitch back. They've had a chance to to uh, practice that, and the pitch back to Lachlan, and he goes nowhere, and Los Al's entire left side has, uh, I'm not sure who was not who did, was not in on that tackle. Lest you forgot, Don, it was uh, Mr. Campbell who went 70 yards for a touchdown in the first quarter to surprise the Edison Chargers. Campbell was named Player of the Week in the newspaper. That'll bring up a second and ten, and Campbell still at quarterback. And we got Jeff Bartuzic and Jason Lachlan in the backfield. It's a handoff to Lachlan, and he's free up the middle. He's still on his feet, and he breaks free for a first down up across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Brought down by number one, Ife Olahite. Ojalite. Ojalite. We're going to play with that one tonight. And we they're going with the, with the unusual formation with just a single center and two single backs, and that's David Van Horbeck, who's playing quarterback. He fakes the hand back, and this time Los Al is not fooled, and they're thrown for a loss. Number 29, Chris Bagley in on the play, 6'1", 180-pound senior, strong safety. Now, let's not forget that Los Al has had a chance to do some scouting, so they were not as fooled as Edison was last week. Yeah, if they were at the game last week, uh, they, I'm sure they spent some time preparing it. Here we go again. We're spread out wide again. This time, there's, they've got Campbell's single side on the right. It's, it's almost setting up a screen pass automatically. Van Horbach throwing the ball down the sideline. Ball intended for Dennis Masuda, and there's looks like there's a flag on the play. George Martin was defending on that play, a 6 195 195-pound senior linebacker. Uh, Huntington Beach trying to exploit the mismatch, a wide receiver against a linebacker, and they drew the interference penalty, it appears. Well, we'll find, we'll wait to see the call, but that's, I think you're guessing. That was Dennis Masuda who went down the sideline, and literally, I think the, court, the linebacker was a little confused and just kind of bumped into him unintentionally, but there goes the foul, and it's a... First down for the Oilers on their own 40. Well, the pass was a little bit short. Uh, the receiver had to slow down, and that's where the contact occurred. All right, we're back to a kind of a regular formation here. This is going to be fun all night. We got three power eye, looks like, to the right. It's, in, it's a handoff right up the middle to Lachlan, and he picks up a couple tough yards, maybe three, and that'll bring up a second down. When you look at this Huntington Beach offense, you see a tight end playing quarterback. Campbell, an immensely talented young man, normally a tight end, 6'4", 205 pounds, but he also plays defensive back. He's a free safety, so uh, you don't see very many high school defensive backs that size. He's everywhere. Now, if Van Horbeck's checking back in, I'm, I was looking to see for that formation, but it's not. They've got Campbell now at quarterback, and Lachlan set up, and a guard switches over here to the left. This is fun. This is fun. Two guards are pulling. No surprise on that. Great defensive effort there. This time by big number 99. Um, Rashawn Davis. Rashawn Davis. And you were He's saying the, that was fun, but it was not fun no. if your name is Jason Lachlan. No. <laughs> Rashawn Davis goes 295. He's listed in the book here. And he's just he's just going to be all Here everything. It is Here again. he is, breaks in. He just smothers Lachlan. He's going to drag him down to the turf. Three That's defenders on that play. That's real good defense. That brings up a third and ten for Huntington Beach. Campbell back, back, looking, got time. Throws to Horn Van right Horvath, who's wide open down the middle. Still on his feet, and he's down and almost up to the 15-yard line. Woo! 
that has brought the Huntington Beach crowd to their feet. Oh, ho. what a terrific. Campbell being over six feet. The receiver was that. wide open. Van Horbeck, an all-league re oh, receiver from last year, brought down by number two, Tony Hartley, but great execution on the part of the Oilers. They needed a big play like that to put them in favorable field position. It's first and ten on Los Al's 15-yard line. Campbell again with the power right formation. This time there's an opening to the left. Martu Bartuzic with the ball, and he's picked up a couple hard yards there. Maybe a good five. Jeff Bartuzic, the hard-driving junior, 5'9", 190-pound fullback, carried a few Griffin defenders on his back. Five solid yards there, Don. Well, that certainly gives uh, Coach Pasco options with uh, second and five. This is great. We didn't expect this at all. There's just about everyone on their feet down here on the sidelines. It's second and five. Pitch back to Lachlan and a good effort around to the right side, but stopped there by number 97, Mike Kahn for Los Al with a great down the, down the side tackle. There's a linebacker. Kahn, a 5'9", 190 pound senior. Nice stop on the play. If Huntington Beach can continue to uh, hit some big pass plays, that'll loosen up the run game and that'll make them competitive offensively. But he's a staunch Los Al defense that allows less than 10 points a game. But he's season. picked up a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third and two. Huntington Beach doing something here. And remember, we've got a real good field goal kicker on this team. There's a whistle and there's flags. We'll wait to see what the referees call here. Illegal procedure, Huntington Beach. That'll bring it back five. Coach is just, okay, that's gonna give um, Huntington Beach the ball on the, on about the 15 yard line. Yeah, it's sitting right on the 15 yard line and it'll be third and about Seven. A little more discussion. Now here's Van Horbeck way out here to the left. Again, he's out here, single coverage. Gamble it with a power eye formation. Pitch back to Lachlan. Lachlan on a rollout. It's a fake. He's throwing the ball to the end zone. Touchdown, Huntington Beach. And there's a flag on the play. Hold everything. There's a flag on the play. I'm going to guess that's defensive interference there. We'll see. I'm waiting for that indication. They're picking the flag up. It is. It's Huntington Beach. Boy, and I would love to take a look at that again. Yes. These Oilers are a fun team to watch. You don't know what to expect. Lachlan throwing the, the back, ball. Throwing the ball into the corner of the end zone. Brought down by number 28. That would be Corey Grimmel. 6'2", 200-pound tight end. Unbelievable. There's Brett Chancellor in for the try for the extra point. It's up and no good. It looks like it just went off to the left. Maybe somebody had a shot at that. Did but somebody... Huntington Beach, whoa. <laughs> That's really exciting. Huntington Beach, six. Los Al, nothing. We're four minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Would you have thunk it? Would I, would not have, thunk it? I would not have thunk it. I tried <laughs> to plant the seed. Uh, Huntington Beach did exactly what they needed to do to be competitive in this ball game. If they continue to do that, they got a chance. Well, we we expected it. We were talking after last week's game that that um, Pasco would have some tricks up his sleeve, and I think he's still got a lot more there. This is this is really exciting. Putting Campbell at quarterback, he's tall enough to see over the line. Um, Los Al is going to have to be looking for anybody with the ball. You're just not not. Throw the la last couple playbooks out the window. Here we go. Huntington Beach kicking off again, short down to the side. They're obviously trying to keep it away. Run back up to the side there by, by number one, I believe that is. And that's Ife Ojalita, Ojalite for 
Los Alamitos, and Los Alamitos will put the ball first and 10. Great run back um, on about the 42. So they've got great field position with four minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the first quarter. This is exciting. I can't remember the last time a team pulled so many tricks out of the bag. Okay. There's top quarterback, Kevin Federick, up at the line. He looks like he's calling the play. There's man in motion. Pass off to the left to Tony Hartley, and he's picked up about five yards to bring up a second down. Tony Hartley is one of the few performers that we will see on both sides of the ball tonight. Hartley is one of the leaders in the county in interceptions. He's got four, and he's also the leading receiver in the county, 54 catches. At a second and four, little flare pass out here to Stan Gynas, and he's off and running to the races down Goodbye. the sidelines. Touchdown, Losal. Just that easy. Un great, great performance. That's probably why he's one of the top runners in the nation. Great, great effort. I haven't seen enough of Guinness to know if that was his full stride or not, but he made that look effortless. Here it is, a little flare out a to the right, and he just takes off. And he's gone all the way. Nothing but pay dirt. And that's why he's an All-American last year and will probably be an All-American this year. Try for the extra point. And it's up, and it's good. So Losal comes right back. That's the way to answer a, a touchdown with two plays later. A 45-yard scamper down the right side, and the score is Losal 7 and Huntington Beach 6, and we're 3 minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Dad used to call me his little deficit spending daughter till I took him to Lou Webb's all new Toyota Buena Park. Lou Webb's Toyota Buena Park really isn't a class by itself. More cars, incredible savings, and really polite people. I got a new Camry for a lot less than I budgeted. Dad was proud. Yeah, Dad bought a new Supra, but he and Mom needed something to tow behind the motorhome. Old fashioned value for a new generation. Saving is a walk in the park. Lou Webb's all new Toyota Buena Park. For all of your business and estate planning needs, see Joe Partiz. I'll show you how to set up private pension plans with a 7% tax-free return. Pay your estate taxes at a discount. Earn over 10% on your annuities. Get the best rates on life insurance and find affordable health insurance for employers and individuals. Call Joe Partiz at 310-799-8540. You owe it to yourself to have the very best. Orange County Container Corporation is a leading manufacturer of corrugated boxes for all your industrial shipping and storage needs. We have four plants to serve you in LA and Orange Counties, San Diego and Mexico. We also offer multicolor point of purchase displays and a complete line of paper products. Call Orange County Container today at 714-826-8881 or 818-333-6363. Michael Federick, president of Orange County Container, wishes good luck to the Griffins. Come to Fiorito's Italian Restaurant, serving great Italian food since 1964. Enjoy Fio's famous thin crust pizza and world's best blue cheese dressing. Fio Rito's features only the freshest ingredients and offers a wonderful menu of homemade Italian favorites, including lasagna, matacotti, and cannelloni. Delicious veal, chicken, and fish entrees offer the best of regional Italian cooking. Fio Rito's Italian Ristorante is located at 1101 Los Alamitos Boulevard. Open for dinner seven days a week. Fio Rito's, family dining at its very best. There's a place in my heart for a sunrise, for the late afternoon feel of the summer's breeze. And there is a place in my home where my heart is always full. Felux, roof windows and skylights made to draw you closer to the world outside and closer to yourself. Because Velux knows the most important world you live in is the one you call your own. 
deadlines have no mercy. Thankfully, you can modem a document to Sir Speedy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sir Speedy will print, copy, bind, and deliver your work when and where you need it. Call your nearby Sir Speedy and be part of the printing, copying digital network. Sir Speedy Printing is located at the corner of Bloomfield and Cerritos in Los Alamitos. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and open Saturday. Visit Green Street Interiors and make your holiday shopping a pleasant experience. We have gifts for every member of the family and decorations to make your holiday festive and unique. Enjoy a peaceful shopping experience away from busy, crowded malls. And remember, the gift wrapping is free. Green Street Interiors is located at 11132 Los Alamitos Boulevard in Los Alamitos. Or call us at 598-8694. Gut check time for Huntington Beach. They made a great uh, drive on that last series. They've got to keep doing that all night because when you play the Griffins of Los Al, you know you're in for a ball game. They are relentless. They come back. They've got the weapons. And uh, they made it look effortless there. That's why they're the number two team in the county. That's why they were number one in the country not too long ago. This is Mike Phillips teeing the ball up. They're very crisp in their huddles. Huntington Beach with the ball up to about the 20 and hit there really and stopped. Trying to see his number there. I think that's number 28. Roy Roberts who really got in there. We're going to take another look at that hit Don. Advancing the ball and boom. Second hit was the final hit that brought him down. The first one slowed him down by Ojalite. And it was big number 97, Mike Kahn, yep. finished him off. That was Eric Yang who had carried the ball there. It's first and 10. Hand off to Lachlan. He's off the right-hand side, and he's pulled down. Picks up maybe a half a yard if he's lucky. And that really illustrates why the Oilers need to reach down in that bottomless bag of tricks because uh, you're not going to be able to run right against the heart of that Los Alamitos defense. You're going to have to have some deception and some uh, play fakes to loosen up the defense. Their choice is either to go one way and run into Mark De La Torre or the other way and run into Matt Skaborski, both two, one running 240, 245 and the other one 235. That was Campbell with the ball and he tried to pick up a few yards on his own and he's picked up maybe two. And that'll bring up a third down. Campbell showed some athleticism on that play. Nice fake, eluded one tackler. But this talent of Los Alamitos is so good. They pursued the ball incredibly. They're going to need, uh, when I say they, I'm talking about the Oilers, to do some counter plays to, uh, to capitalize on the over-pursuit of the Griffins. It's a third and eight now for Huntington Beach, and they're in a regular power eye formation. It's a rollout. Pass out here. Almost picked off. Uh, oh, Lachlan, I think, came up with the ball. And now there's a flag thrown. I'll have to wait and see what that is. I'm not sure whether that ball was complete or incomplete. We'll have to wait and see what the referees threw that flag, I think, well after the play. The way they're lining up, it looks, looks like that was incomplete. And we'll bring up a fourth down, but we'll wait to see what the penalty is. We're going to watch it again here. A very aggressive Lachlan defensive going up for the play. ball high in the air for Losal was Ryan um, Gragnano Inten over the top. Corey Grimmel was the intended receiver on that play for Huntington Beach, number 28. And uh, the pass was just a little late getting there, allowing the defense time to react. Fourth down. So it is a penalty against Huntington Beach after the play. So that means we'll be punting. Huntington Beach will be punting from, that's Donnie Tomato who's kicking. He gets a good kick out standing in his end zone. It rolls, takes a Huntington Beach bounce and stops at about the 31 yard line where Losal will put the ball in play with a minute and 54 seconds left to go 
in the first quarter. The kick sure looked good initially, but it gives Los Alamitos excellent field position. If Huntington Beach is to stay in this ball game, they're going to have to win the battle of field position. You cannot give a Los Alamitos team this kind of field position. First and ten, fake, fake pass. Now it's a pass out to the left, to number two, or number 11. Number 11. Devon Griffin. Devon Griffin, he streaks down the sidelines. He's so quick, and that's a first down for Los Al. Whoa. Talk, talk about a powerfully built running back. 5'11", 220 pounds, senior. That brings up a first down for Los Al. Handoff right up the middle. That's Mr. Griffin again. And he's picked up another first down. And while they move the chains, it gives us a chance to say thank you to our underwriters, Rainbow Disposal, Gustafson Brothers, DeLillo Chevrolet, Huntington Beach Fire Med Program, The Independent, Mandic Motors, The Huntington Beach Hospital and Medical Center, and GTE, The Everything Pages. Thank you very, very much our underwriters for bringing HBTV3 Sports Game of the Week. It's another handoff right up the middle, this time to Tony Austin, and it's a touchdown, Los Al. Wow. Wow is right. This Griffin team is, without a doubt, the most talented team I've seen this year offensively. Here's the right touchdown, up the you middle. see Austin doing what he's done many times before, scoring six points for the Griffins. There's some big, big fellows up front blocking the way, making it look easy. Try for the extra point. Up and good. Mike Phillips on the kick there. And we've got a minute and 11 seconds left to go and Los Al has moved up. Los Al 14 and Huntington Beach six. We would be remiss, Don, if we didn't mention the, the big size advantage that uh, the Griffins have tonight. It's very obvious when you look down on the field, uh, but you can't measure the heart of the Huntington Beach Oiler players. And uh, we know that they're gonna put forth a valiant effort tonight and uh, do everything they can to remain in this ball game. It almost seems to me uh, in the huddle as if the Griffin players were trying to decide they each want a piece of the ball. There's so many talented players. Right. Give it to me, it's my turn. Uh, every play, it's somebody different. All right, Mike Phillips will be kicking off again for Los Al with the minute and 11 seconds left in the first quarter. And deep for Huntington Beach is Eric Yang along with Brent Bogleman. And it's Yang, and he's going to go up the left side, cuts outside, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. Uh, about the 22 yard lines where Huntington Beach will put it first in play. And there's some real good hitting going on. Down there. <laughs> Almost a late hit there. Yeah. We do our part to help the referees every once in a while. <laughs> well, the, actually, it was all those players down on the sidelines that were helping there, too. I'll tell you what, when we arrived here tonight, Don, I didn't know if we were coming to a football game or to chaperone a party. Uh, the cheering section here at Huntington Beach is, is something else. They're here in full support for the Huntington Beach Oilers. Facing one of the top teams in the county. Lachlan. Jason Lachlan still with the ball. Good effort for Lachlan. And he's up across, picks up about four yards. And he's knocked down there by a whole host. One thing's for sure, it's going to take more than one hit to bring down Jason Lachlan. 5'10", 190 pound, a strong junior. He will be returning. And that has got to bring... Uh, delight to the heart of George Pasco, the Huntington Beach coach. 13 years on the sidelines for the Oilers. It'll bring up a second and five. Campbell still at quarterback. Power eye. He still keeps the ball, pitches back. And the ball is looks like it's fallen on the ground and may have been so going down as a fumble, and Los Al has recovered the ball in Los Huntington Beach territory on We're about the 18. We're going to watch this again, and, and there's the uh, tight end pitch, and uh, Lachlan can't quite get his hands on it. 
And uh, Losal recovers. Another break for Losal, and uh, we'll see if they capitalize again. Huntington Beach really needs a big play now defensively. They've got to tighten up and uh, try to prevent the floodgates from opening here. Well, we're not going to get that play off on that quarter. That's when you have a tight end who is coming, become used to catching the ball rather than trying to pitch the ball, and those kind of things are going to happen. That's the end of the first quarter with the score, Los Alamitos 14 and Huntington Beach 6. And now we're going down on the field for an interview with Gary Pitts. Take it away, Gary. Thanks, Don. I'm with uh, Roy Brummett, the former uh, football coach here at the Huntington. Also, Carter Lewis, the former uh, track coach. Uh, Roy, how's it feel being to watch the game and sit about there coaching? Well, I can tell you, I, I don't make any mistakes now. That's the biggest thing right here is I haven't made a mistake standing down here in so long. That that's the best thing about it, you know. I don't make any mistakes now. <laughs> but I know you're out here cheering on your team, uh, and and that's great. As I uh, went to school here. I love this school, and uh, I'm very supportive of the team. And they're a good group of kids. They play hard, and uh, it's going to be uh, – they got a tough one tonight, but uh, they're on the board, and things, things are going to turn around for them. And uh, all three of us went to Huntington Beach High. And I'm one of the graduates here, too. And one of my former track stars here, a friend, is Carter Lewis. And he coached 20 years. And how's it feel? And uh, we're going back to the game. Uh, Carter, give me a little real quick. Well, that's a good game. Uh, I'm enjoying watching it. They're playing pretty good. It's a uh, tough competition, but we're doing the best we can. Now back to the game, Don. Thanks, Gary. Three Huntington Beach graduates there. I saw Gary earlier with... Um, I think they were ready to put him back in. <laughs> He's ready to play. If he got a mouthpiece, he'd go out there. <laughs> I think that's all he would need to. We're just underway in the second quarter. It's Los Alamitos versus Huntington Beach. We're playing at Cap Shuey Field in Huntington Beach High School. And it's a second and six for Los Al. Straight drop back. Plenty of time. And this time, he steps up in the hole and brought down by number 62, James Parker. James Parker made quite a few tackles last week's game, and he's a big guy up front and can tend to get the job done. 6'1", 255 pounds, senior, the biggest person on that Oiler defensive line. He made his presence felt there as Federick had lots of time, though, and he was stepping up as they teach him how to do, and this time James broke through for the tackle. Great, good play. That'll bring up a third and seven. So many weapons and spread out all over the field. Federick across the middle. Great pass and reception to Tony Hartley. And that's going to bring up a first down. Corey Grimmel delivered the blow on the uh, after the reception on Hartley. Nice play by Grimmel. Hartley. 6'2", 191-pound senior. Well, they're now camped out right on the five-yard line with an opportunity to score again. It's first and ten on the five. Federick fading pass out to... to... Um, that was Hartley again. Hartley, and this time he is out of bounds on the reception, covered there time, this time by Billy Campbell. Great touch on the ball, though. You know, one of the few uh, defensive backs who's actually taller than Hartley at 6'2", Campbell 6'4", on that play. They're knocking on the door again, Don. Second and goal. This time it's a handoff right up the middle. That time to Jordan Michael, a junior. And he's cross and up to, oh, well, he's maybe picked up about a yard. So I guess that uh, Losal will start to try to get as many people into the game as possible tonight, so we're going to be struggling along trying to keep up with, with that change. It's third and goal. And there's a timeout. And it's being taken by Huntington Beach. And they want to talk things over. Well, that'll give us a chance to uh, let you know that this game is brought to you by the generous underwriting of Rainbow Disposal, 
Gustafson Brothers, DeLillo Chevrolet, Huntington Beach Fire Med Program, the Independent Mandic Motors, the Huntington Beach Hospital and Medical Center, and GTE, the Everything Pages. And we just want to thank them for their contributions to bring HBTV3 sports coverage. And we also ask that if you're in the neighborhood or you're dealing with these folks to, and you've enjoyed HBTV3's coverage, to please say thank you to our underwriters. Okay, the situation is there's nine minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the second quarter. It's Huntington Beach, Losal. Losal is camped out on a third and goal um, on Huntington Beach end of the field, and they took a timeout to talk things over. And we talked about the crowd a little while ago. They're really unique. They've got a great PA system here. The crowd dancing like crazy. Federick, handoff, number 18, cross, and good, good stiffening there. I'm not sure he's in. Now they're saying yes, touchdown. That was number 16, Tony Austin. Tony Austin with the ball. His second touchdown of the game. And they make it look easy. And they're lining up now for the extra point. And now they're doing one of the unusual, oh, I thought they were gonna set up in that, in that single center. Now they're coming back to set up. It's Mike Phillips attempting the extra point. And it's good. Well, they were, they were lining up there, Mike, like, like they were gonna do that uh, Huntington Beach routine. So that's Here's the- Here's Tony Austin again. You see the tail half of that? Into the end zone, touchdown, big hole. And uh, I'll tell you, we have talked again and again about the great offensive line play for Los Alamitos. You saw it on that play. And uh, not to take anything away from Los Al, they've got 21 points on the board, but Huntington Beach needs to make them earn it a little bit more by putting them in tougher field position, make them have long, sustained drives down the field. You can't put a talented team like this in good field position and hold them. They've got some big, big fellas right up on that front line that makes it easy for the backs to follow. It's Los Alamitos 21 and Huntington Beach 6. Nine minutes, 49 seconds left to go in the second quarter. And it's Mike Phillips for Los Al kicking off. Taken there by Eric Yang, and he's got the ball up the left side, and he stopped. Taken down there, hit first man to him. I'm trying to see, he's still trying to get up from the bottom of that pile. Looks like Eric may be shaken up on that play. He got hit by about four or five Los Al Griffins. And Eric is getting up slowly. Yeah, they're going to take some. They're going to take some time out to help him. Now, there's the. We were saying earlier that uh, there was a real good turnout tonight. Here's the Huntington Beach cheerleaders, um, and really good support by the Huntington Beach Oilers fans. And there's a good crowd here, also from Los Al. Okay, looks like Eric got off the field okay, and it's going to bring up a. First down for Huntington Beach. They're putting the ball in play about their own 16-yard line. First and 10. Campbell at quarterback. It's a quick trap up the middle. Taken there by Jeff Bartuzic. And he's picked up a couple hard yards. Let's not forget that Losal carried a 47-game winning streak into the playoffs last year when they got defeated 28-24 by Modern Day. They've only sustained one defeat this year. They've got a very loyal following, as evidenced by their stands on the opposite side of the field. They're saying that was just a yard, so it's going to be bring up a second and nine. Campbell still at quarterback. Pitch back to Lachlan, a fumble on the play, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. In there on the tackle was number 30 for Los Al. And that was Ryan Gregnano, one of their top defensive players. And with the way Los Alamitos pursues on the ball, you can't help but put yourself in the position of the Oilers and be maybe hearing some footsteps. You know as soon as you get the ball, you're going to be pounced upon. And that's what happened here with Lachlan, number 30. There's George Martin for Los Al, the linebacker 
who was in hot pursuit there also. That'll bring up a third and 20 for Huntington Beach. Hand off to Lachlan on a trap. The, lot, the hole was there, surprisingly, and he gets up. Good yardage, almost up, back up to the original line of scrimmage. Brought down by Mike Kahn and George Martin again. Punting situation for the Oilers. That play was coming right at us where we could see the, the hole open up. So there's still some good hitting going on there, and Huntington's still hanging in there pretty tough. But that brings up a four, fourth and 11, and... Ryan Tamino, it will be back to punt, and Gregano. And Gregano is deep with the ball, and he's stopped immediately on the 40 yard line. Well, that's Ryan Gregano, brought down by number 23, Eric Yang. 5'7, 165 so pounds. Sophomore. I guess Eric's fine. He was went off a little slow on that last play, came back in, makes a tackle. That makes him feel good. It's amazing what competitive juices will do for you. Well, here's Los Al starting out again in great field position inside uh, Huntington Beach end of the field. Now we've got a timeout for another player who was shaken up coming off slowly. There's some, again, some ser serious hitting going on. That's um, Corey Gremmel coming off a little bit slow. Closer look at the uh, offense of Los Alamitos reveals that Hartley is the leading receiver in the county. Almost 1,000 yards receiving, 54 catches. Guinness averages 23 yards a catch. Okay, it's first and 10 for Los Al on Huntington Beach. He's it's Federick changing the line, changing the call. Looks like he's gonna change it again. Got so many weapons. Quick drop, cross the sideline to number two. Tony Hartley, and he's up real close to the first down on a slant play. He saw something over, open on the coverage, called it, and that's all. It is a first down. Brought down Whoa. by Dennis Masuda with help from Eric Yang. He is so quick off the line too. You don't Tony see very many high school teams audibleizing at the Boy, last that's scrimmage. Quick, another quick drop. A little sideline pass, wide open to Mike Johnson on a picks up about another five yards. And we're seeing our soft southpaw quarterback, Federick, very accurate on the medium range sideline passes. They look so effective, it makes you wonder how they could possibly lose. We haven't seen Esperanza this year, but boy, it's, it's really hard to imagine. That brings up a second and seven. This time it's a reverse. With the ball, it's Guinness. Guinness with the ball, and he's just moved so nicely and he's up and out of bounds and I'm trying to see where they're marking that just about the 15 14 yard line and that's another first down for Los Al they're moving in a ball again we're gonna watch the replay here and you're gonna see Guinness almost like a gazelle loping just across great. the field great long strides oh, very beautiful. effective very fluid runner taken out there and knocked out about by Don Horbeck Going to be working hard all night. It is first down for Los Al. They're moving again. Quick drop. Right to the corner. Turns. And there's Van Hardbeck almost with the interception. Great coverage there. And that ball was intended for Tony Hartley. And, he, and Van Hardbeck really had really good coverage on him. Turned around, almost made that interception. He was so focused on Hartley that... Uh, he didn't see the ball that was right in his face, and, and that's understandable. A very good defensive play. All right, that's going to bring up a second and 10, and Los Al still moving. Three, three wide receivers out to the right, and it's a quick trap up the middle, wide open. Number 16 going across the goal line is Tony Austin, and there's a flag on the play. We don't know if they're going to call that a touchdown or not. But if it is, it'd be the third time for Mr. Austin, who's got a nose for that goal line. Not to be denied. It's a face mask against the Huntington Beach Oilers, and the touchdown will stand. Touchdown count. Just, they've got so many weapons. So many weapons, Mike. Very hard to defense. I would not want to be the defensive coordinator against the Griffins. 
They're going for, well, they set up in this wide split uh, formation and then come back to set up for the kick. That's Mike Phillips again. And there's a whistle before, just right after the snap, there's a whistle. Could be delay a game for Los Al. And they don't do too many things wrong either. We haven't had a lot of penalties called tonight either. That's probably one of the first ones we've had against Los Al. So now he'll be kicking from his own, or from Huntington's 15 yard line for the extra point after that last touchdown. Up. And it's good. Whoa. They sure can move the ball. Now almost at will. With five minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the second half, that makes the score Los Alamitos 28 and Huntington Beach 6. And not since that beginning drive of Huntington Beach has it's been the Los Alamitos Griffin story ever since. It's been three and out for Huntington, and they'll just have to hunker down and give it another try here, Mike. The old, I'm the lost old, for words. I'm the lost old for words. Let's try. And, Whoa. and I don't see any letdown in the Oiler players. No, I don't either, or the fans. Los Al sure has a good crowd out tonight for them, supporting them too. Phillips with the kick, good, deep kick, driving back into the end zone. And they're gonna say that's a touchback and Huntington Beach will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20. We've got five minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the first half of the Los Alamitos Huntington Beach HBTV3 Sports Game of the Week. We mentioned in our opener that uh, Lachlan was the primary offensive weapon for the Oilers. Almost 1,000 yards, 161 carries, 955 yards, 5.9 yards a carry coming into tonight. Could go over 1,000 here tonight. Okay, Campbell still with at quarterback for Huntington Beach. Pitch back to Lachlan, around to the right side, and he picks up a hard four or five, and he stopped there by five or six or seven. Los Al with number 30 leading the way, and that's Ryan Gregnano for Los Al. And it looks like a penalty against Los Al. It could have been a face mask. It looked like Lachlan really, his head whipped around there at the end of that play. I didn't see that. It was a vicious hit, and he will be feeling that one tomorrow. You can count on that. So it is a face mask penalty. Looks, appears to be, and it's a major one. Yes, they're saying face mask, and that's a 15-yard penalty. Right after we were talking about being fairly penalty free, here's another one for Los Al. Putting Huntington Beach in uh, up on their own 38, 37 yard line. And they sure would like to get something on the board here before the half. That's Bartusik and Lachlan in the backfield with number five as a quarterback. Lachlan with the ball still on his feet, still on the feet, wrestles five or six Los Al. And that was Donnie Tamano who was in there at quarterback for Huntington Beach. I told you we would have to keep checking the numbers here tonight as we go because I think George Pasco is going to keep trying to keep us all guessing. I'm surprised they waited to the second quarter to make <laughs> the uh, first quarterback change. Well, that was a that was two hard fought yards. There's been a little equipment checking here on helmets and Billy Campbell back in, but he's back in in his normal position as tight end. And again, that's Donnie Tamano at quarterback for Huntington Beach. Second and 10, eight. Lachlan again with the ball, and he's up across the 45. Pretty good yardage against this tough team. Tamano is a 6 190 pound junior, number five. And coming up out of the pile there, was number 97, Mike Kahn for Los Al. Along, and when I say single tackles, there are not too many single tackles being taken place here by Los Al. They're usually two, three, and four right away. Very swarming defense. Third and three.
Fake to Plano, and a quick pass across the middle, and it's caught. And I think that's Lachlan with the ball. Once he comes up out of the pile, that's a that's going to be a first down. I thought uh, Tomano was midfield. darts there. And into Los Al territory, but it appears that that is Jason. I think that's Jason Lachlan. And he's getting up very, very slow, and there's been a timeout for injury. A very difficult throw for Tomiano. Uh, running one way, having to throw back the opposite way. He looked like he was throwing darts there, and he put it right on the money. This uh, Los Al secondary, we mentioned that Hartley has four interceptions, but his uh, defensive back mate, Ojalite, also has four interceptions to be among the county leaders. Is that number 28? That's Grummel, isn't it? That appears to be. Yeah. That's Corey Gremmel who's coming up slow, who made that completion for the first down across the middle. But he's he's coming up a little bit slow, but he is coming off the field, and he's in really good shape to be up and walking anyway. That was a terrific effort on his part. He was shaken up a little earlier and had come off and went back in. So their Huntington Beach players are showing some real intense effort here tonight. It's first and ten. Pitch back to Lachlan. And he's looking for some room and doesn't find it. There's another five or six. Los Al Griffins all over Mr. Lachlan. Coming up out of that is number 83. Mike Martinez. We haven't called his number yet, but I'm sure he's been on a variety of those other tackles. A host of Griffins. No place to go. And we've got second down. Looks like second and 11. Bartutzik and Lachlan in the backfield with Tamano as quarterback as a rollout to the left. Little quick pitch out here. Complete to Lachlan. And he's picked up maybe two yards, which is going to bring up a third down. Brought down by Griffin linebacker Mike Kahn. That was that dart throw again, this time fooling no one. They did pick up a yard, third and long. We've got two minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the first half. And it's Huntington Beach's ball just inside the Griffin territory at about the 46-yard line with a third and 10. Tamano rolls well out of the pocket. Let's see if he rolls this way this time. He's got receivers out here to the left. There he comes. Rolling out here to the right. It's a long pass down the middle, and it's picked off by number 23 and he's got the ball up across midfield still on his feet down to about the 35 yard line and that was Dave Bacani, Bacani for Los Al he just went over Van Horbeck with that for that interception and we're going to look at it again here Don not a bad pass just a great defensive play here by number 23 Bacani and a nice return as well. You're going to see his moves. He gets around the corner, and he's trying to line up some blockers here. Finally brought down by number 58, the offensive player for the Oilers. That would be Mike DuBose. Now that puts the ball on the 35-yard line, and Losal puts the ball in play with two minutes and four seconds left to go in the half. And it's a straight handoff up the middle to Devin Griffin, and he's picked up about seven or eight. Maybe nine yards to bring up a second and one. They move the ball very, very well up the middle. Great running game to go along with their heralded boy, oh boy. passing attack. All you hear about is the passing attack, but these runners are talented. That's Griffin's single set in the back. Four receivers. Quick strip, drop back, pass out here to the left, and that ball was intended for Stan Guinness, and it was overthrown out of bounds. And that's probably one of the few errant passes that he's had this evening. Absolutely. Bringing up a third down. There haven't been too many third downs for Los Al tonight. We said at the beginning of the broadcast that Los Al came in averaging 33 plus points a game. They're well on their way tonight. Straight drop back. 
play still working, still working. Up the middle, number 11, Devin Griffin, and stop there. Good hit. We'll nice see. draw play. We see Griffin explode on the acceleration here. He's throttled to the to the bottom of the uh, dashboard there, and he's uh, picking up a first down. It for was Billy, Griffins. Billy Griffin, who or Billy Campbell, who made the made the stop there. And another Oiler has been shaken up and comes off. That was, I think that's number 48. Pasilli, yeah, Matt Pasilli. And he's brought himself off under his own steam, and he's down there, and he looks like he'll, he'll, he's going to shake it off and get back in there. Boy, Pasilli had a great game last week. Huntington Beach would love to incorporate him into the ball game tonight. We've got a timeout, and... There's a minute and 29 seconds left to go in the half, and it'll be Losal Ball putting it first and 10 in play on the just inside the 15-yard line of Huntington Beach. And Pastilli's back in the ballgame. Out comes number 31. That would be Eric Fox. The Griffins return from the sideline where they all huddled with the coach. Okay, Federick at quarterback. Fake, fake handoff this time. Good rush. Lutes the rush. Still has it. Federick with the ball, picking his way down the left side and dives in to the end zone for a touchdown. Kevin Federick. Just with a like great they designed athletic it in the playbook, huh, Don? I don't think so. Uh, but as you said, athletic maneuver on Federick's part. Talk about Showing it. that he's not just uh, known for his arm, but he can run too. Did not fool the defense there. However, his adjustment did. Heads up play. He's got good feet. Lines up his blockers and sees where the goal line is. And that gives the Griffins 34 points. And the extra point is good. And that makes... The Griffins have with after that extra point by Mike Phillips, that makes the score Los Alamitos 35 and Huntington Beach 6. There are some weary players already right here in the first half, and there's some big, big players on Los Al. They have a terrific, terrific football team. And now you and I, Mike, are getting a chance to see why at one time USA Today had them ranked number one in the nation. They are now ranked, I believe, number 16 as we uh, are, are covering this ball game. Well, Huntington Beach now feels like many other teams on the Los Al schedule. Uh, this game is not even half over yet, so uh, we'll see if Huntington Beach can make some adjustments and uh, close the gap. Good crowd there from Los Al. As you can see they're here supporting their Griffins, and they have a lot to be proud of. This is a great football team. Mike Phillips kicking off again, getting a lot of practice tonight. It's a deep kick, and it is into the end zone. And the ball is whistled dead. It was Eric Yang who stepped inside the end zone with the ball. That'll give the Oilers first and 10 on their own 20 with a minute and 18 seconds left to go in the first half. Boy, it would really boost morale for uh the Oilers to get on the scoreboard here. They've got a long way to go, though. Well, let's see who's quarterbacking now. It is Tom Tomino, number five. Hand off to Lachlan, and he goes nowhere. Boy, what a quick stop. It was so quick, I wasn't able to pick up the number. What a terrific hit. But we heard it up here. We sure did. That was just, he was in there and almost in time for the handoff. They pursue so much on the uh, Griffin side of the ball, a reverse might be in order here for Huntington Beach. It is second and 13. 47 seconds left to go in the half. Quick hitter. 
Looks like there's the trouble with the exchange. Fumble, but I believe Huntington Beach has recovered. Bartuzic, I believe, recovered that fumble, and that'll bring up a third and about 15 for Huntington Beach. Desire oh, is second not and lacking. 15. I'm sorry. Desire is not third lacking on the part of the Oilers, but when you play an opponent so talented, it really makes you question yourself. Even the simple fundamentals become a chore. Just a few more seconds left to go, and I'm not sure we're going to get this play off to end the first half. Well, we sure have seen one heck of a performance by one of the top football teams, not only in the county, maybe in this part of the country, but also in the, in the whole country. Hey, if scoring it's half equals time. excitement, it's the end of the second quarter. It's Los Alamitos 35 and Huntington Beach 6. Me and Grandma rode the bus to Timbuktu to get our first new car. Only had two models then. Good thing Grandma likes black. Took your daddy to the original Toyota Buena Park to make a great buy on his first car. Fine store, but nothing compares to this new Toyota Buena Park. I envy your generation. You have things we never imagined. Hope Lou Webb's new Toyota Buena Park doesn't spoil you too much. Old-fashioned value for a new generation. Saving is a walk in the park. Lou Webb's all-new Toyota Buena Park. For all of your business and estate planning needs, see Joe Partees. I'll show you how to set up private pension plans with a 7% tax-free return. Pay your estate taxes at a discount. Earn over 10% on your annuities. Get the best rates on life insurance and find affordable health insurance for employers and individuals. Call Joe Partees at 310-799-8540. You owe it to yourself to have the very best. Orange County Container Corporation is a leading manufacturer of corrugated boxes for all your industrial shipping and storage needs. We have four plants to serve you in L.A. and Orange Counties, San Diego, and Mexico. We also offer multicolor point-of-purchase displays and a complete line of paper products. Call Orange County Container today at 714-826-8881 or 818-333-6363. Michael Federick, president of Orange County Container, wishes good luck to the Griffins. Come to Fiorito's Italian Restaurant, serving great Italian food since 1964. Enjoy Fio's famous thin crust pizza and world's best blue cheese dressing. Fiorito's features only the freshest ingredients and offers a wonderful menu of homemade Italian favorites, including lasagna, matacotti, and cannelloni. Delicious veal, chicken, and fish entrees offer the best of regional Italian cooking. Fiorito's Italian Ristorante is located at 1101 Los Alamitos Boulevard. Open for dinner seven days a week. Fiorito's, family dining at its very best. Don't just water seal your concrete driver patio. Glaze and seal it. Glaze and Seal offers clear, protective sealers for all your concrete, tile, and masonry surfaces. Glaze and Seal water seals as it resists stains and provides beautiful wet look protection. Use Glaze and Seal on driveways, walkways, garage floors, brick, patios, and more. So don't just water seal it, Glaze and Seal it. Available at these fine merchants. Bar Lumber, your friendly home improvement center with convenient hours and now 11 locations to serve you. Deadlines have no mercy. Thankfully, you can modem a document to Sir Speedy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sir Speedy will print, copy, bind, and deliver your work when and where you need it. Call your nearby Sir Speedy and be part of the printing, copying digital network. Sir Speedy Printing is located at the corner of Bloomfield and Cerritos in Los Alamitos. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and open Saturday. Visit Green Street Interiors and make your holiday shopping a pleasant experience. We have gifts for every member of the family and decorations to make your holiday festive and unique. Enjoy a peaceful shopping experience away from busy, crowded malls. And remember, the gift wrapping is free. Green Street Interiors is located at 11132 Los Alamitos Boulevard in Los Alamitos. Or call us at 598-8694. We've just seen a heck of a game early on, haven't we, Mike? We really have We've seen so far. a heck of a team. How about giving us a little recap on uh, this scoring? It would be my pleasure, Don. 
Uh, Huntington Beach opened it up early with Corey Grimmel scoring on a seven yard pass from Jason Lachlan, a surprise that put the Oilers ahead six to nothing. The kick failed. From then on, it was all Los Alamitos. Stan Guinness opened up Los Alamitos scoring on a long pass play. The kick was good and the score was seven to six Los Alamitos. Following that, number 16, Tony Austin scored on a six yard run. The kick was good. Los Alamitos 14, Huntington Beach six. The next time they scored, it was again, Tony Austin. Los Alamitos, a two yard run. Kick was good. Los Alamitos leaped ahead 21 to six. The next score was again by guess who? Tony Austin, number 16, a 13 yard run. Kick good, score 28 to six. And finally, it was Kevin Federick the quarterback getting into the, the thick of things with his feet running for a uh, touchdown. The kick was good and that put the score where it sits right now. 35 to 6 Los Alamitos. This Los Alamitos team is very very good. They are big, they're fast, they have lots of weapons but they seem to have terrific depth but this starting lineup is mostly seniors. Their offensive line and their offensive team has three juniors, the rest are seniors, and the coach will be pressed into action of putting together another strong team for, for next year. Now right now he's just enjoying everything he's got. He's done a terrific job. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, John Barnes has got quite a track record. Uh, came into the season 136 victories, only 46 defeats and six losses. He has definitely seen excellent talent graduate before, and he's obviously kept his winning ways up. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. But on the positive side for Huntington Beach, this is a young team, and they continue to get older with more experience, bigger and better things ahead next year for George Pasco and Kavokes. We, uh, we also just want to say uh, that we're also having a joint venture here this evening, uh, HBTV3 and the Los Alamitos Television Channel 3 will be showing this game in their area in the Rossmore and the area covered by Los Alamitos. Always branching out. Yeah, great cooperative effort. You know, if this Los Al team has a weakness, though, I have yet to see it. Right. It's just there's just too many too many opportunities. Uh, they did Huntington Beach did stop the the passing attack, and the next thing you know, it's running, and it's they're not one or two yard gains. They're 11 and 12 and 13 yard gains. Well, we'll find out if the Oilers have come up with anything at halftime. They will be getting the ball first. Here's uh, the coach down there with Brian Hornback. Van Hornbeck, David right? Van David Horbeck. Horn Hornbeck, Van Horbeck. Very uh, good work, guys. And the Griffins are uh, teeing it up, preparing to open the second half. And uh, we'll find out if uh, they're going to rest on their laurels or if they're going to come out and try to add on to their margin right now. It'll be Mike Phillips kicking off for the Griffins, and we're just about underway of the second half of the Huntington Beach Los Alamitos game. On HB TV3, as Lachlan with the ball, and he's got it up across the 25 to about the 26 yard line. And we just once again want to thank the underwriters for HB TV3 coverage, and that's Rainbow Disposal, Gustafson Brothers, DeLillo Chevrolet, Huntington Beach Fire Med Program. The Independent, Mandic Motors, the Huntington Beach Hospital and Medical Center, and GTE, the Everything Pages. We thank you very much. Well, here we go, Mike, right away with a unusual formation with Tomato now as, oh, it's a, a, a I could, can't even get it out. The center shot putted the ball back to the, I believe, flanker. That was David Van Horbeck, who was behind all the linemen who were lined up on the left side. 
The ball is still lined up in the center. They're back in the same formation again. You're not quite able to see that with your screen. Here we go. You can see the center is right almost in the center of your screen. He centers the ball back. That tom to tomato who now pitches it back. And now this is what we kind of expected from Huntington Beach, some, some fun. The ball was passed back to Jason Lachlan, who then forward passed it up Bill Campbell. to Campbell. And actually Van Horbeck was playing quarterback on that play. I was kind of watching that rugby the other night. <laughs> this, is, this is the roots of the game of football. Yeah, we're and they're back again to right the here. roots, and we're doing it again. Student body right. This time, Van Horbeck at quarterback. Van Horbeck at quarterback. He throws the ball on a, and I, unfortunately, I think what happened there, that number 48, Matt, Matt Pistilli. Pistilli, tripped and fell over, and that ball, if he'd have been on his feet and turned around, that ball was there. Um, this has got to be a lot more fun. It brings up a second and 10, and no, it's fun for us, to, a challenge to keep up with people. Okay, now it's second and 10, and it's Tornado with the ball, with a quarterback again. Quick hitter off to the left and caught there by Dennis Masuda, number four, and he's got a gain of about six. Brought down by number 30, Ryan Gregnano. So that's going to bring up a third and four, and Huntington Beach with... Huntington Beach has outstanding <laughs> receivers in uh, Masuda and Campbell. Uh, and uh, this is the third quarterback, just like last week, third quarterback in the game. Now Campbell's at quarterback. This certainly is a challenge for us up in the booth to stay on top of this. But fun. Little pitch back now to Lachlan, and he's going left, and he doesn't get anywhere, and he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Strung out very, very nicely there by Los Alamitos' defense. An attempt at decep a deception did not work that time. Los Alamitos was right on top of that. And strung, out, strung out there by linebackers like George Martin, who kept that play going out and out until the pursuit could catch up. No gain. Fourth and four. And Huntington Beach will punt. Maybe. Uh. <laughs> High snap. And it's a good kick. It's going to roll. And it stops around the 25-yard line. There's a hit, late hit, and a flag after the ball was whistled dead. We will wait and see what that is. I believe we're going to get a late hit on Huntington Beach. Yeah, uh, number 40, Jeff Bartuzic, was hit by number 30, uh, Ryan Grignano. And uh, it wasn't so much the lateness of the hit as much as it was being so far away from the play. Yeah. Bartuzic was 10 yards behind the ball, not making any attempt to advance it. And it's a major penalty. That's just that frustration hit. That's all that is. Okay, it's first and 10 for Los Al, and they're now back in good field position as they've been most of the evening. Federick rolling, running. Looking for a man, and he's got him in the middle of the field. That's Torrey Hartley, and he's still on his feet, and he fights for some more yards. Tony Hartley, and brought down there by Masuda. And that's terrific effort on the part of Tony Hartley. Here it is again. You see Federick uh, using his head, finding the open receiver, buying time. Receiver gets open, hardly spins, trying to get away from the oil defenders, and is almost able to get away, if not for Masuda, number four, who brings him down. Quick hitter up the middle, wide open, right up the middle as it's been most of the evening. And that's Tony Austin with the ball, and he's up close to another first down. Very nice, smooth, flowing run. Started inside, bounced it outside, and a first down for Los Alamitos. We're going to try to uh, name some of these upfront linemen. We've got Brian Bosch and Tony Larkin, the two offensive guards. I knew I was going to do that. It's Troy Larkin, excuse me. Troy Larkin and Brian Bosch, the two offensive guards for Los Al. Quick hitter across to uh, the tight end. 
Number 94. It's number 84, Ryan Dunbar. Oh, sorry. 6'1", 170-pound wide receiver. The offensive tackles for Los Alas, Mark De La Torre and Matt Skaborski. And receiver there was Ryan Dunbar, number 94. This time Huntington Beach stops them. Devin Griffin attempted to advance the ball, brought down by number 26 of the Oilers, Brent Vogelman. Actually a loss on the play of two, which will bring up a second and 12. So the running game got stalled there. We'll, let's see what they do now. Back to the air. All kinds Still of time. all kinds of time. Across the middle, in and out of the hands. I believe that's Tony Hartley again. Yes, it is. And he's covered very nicely there by Chris Doe. And anyone else in on that that you could see, Mike? Yeah, there were two other defensive backs, but I focused on Doe, number seven. Good defense by the Oilers secondary on that play. Third and 11. Drop back, one time again. This time wide open on the left is Hartley. He's still open field with the ball. Still on his feet, still on his feet. Elusive runner till enough Huntington Beach players catch up and put him down around the five yard line. Whoa, what do you have to do to knock down Tony Hartley after he gets the ball and starts running? What we'll see here on the replay is Federick finding the open receiver, Hartley, beautiful open field running here and we'll watch his uh, right foot. He might lose his shoe here or he comes awfully close to it. Refusing to go down. Right there he's dragging David Yang, number 23, and I think he loses his shoe almost right there. First and goal. Pass off to the right and almost picked off by Chris Doe of Huntington Beach. That Beginning ball was a little bit off. short. It looks know, like it was a broken pattern. I see uh, Federick going over and talking to his... That was uh, Hartley, talk, number two, Hartley. appeared to break off that pattern, as he said. I think the ball was thrown to the right spot, but Hartley was not there. That'll bring up a second and six. But it's second and goal. A position Los Al's been in most of the evening also. Deep in Huntington Beach territory. Quick hitter across the middle. This time, good hitting going on up in the middle and stop there. Getting up out of that tackle is number 26 for Huntington Beach. Brent Vogelman with a good tackle on Tony Austin. And Tony Austin has stopped that play right, right at the line of scrimmage. And Austin says, I've got three touchdowns tonight. Give me four. Trying to get in for the fourth touchdown. I'm sure they were just guessing. And he's there again to give it another try. It is third and goal. And they're sitting on about the four, five yard line. Roll out, pitch out to Austin. Good hit there, good low tackle by Vinny Mesa on Tony Austin and stops him short of the goal line on about the three. Vinny Mesa asserting some senior leadership on that play. 5'10", 175 pound defensive back. Nice tackle, prevented six points for Los Al. So Los Al, we're gonna wait to see what they do. We're gonna, looks like they've been go surprised most of the evening. It looks like they're gonna go for, it's fourth and goal. Huntington Beach for a stand. Quick hitter over the middle. And I think they've stopped him. I think they've stopped him just short. Huntington Beach is coming off. Great defensive effort that sure ignites the crowd. Absolutely. Beautiful stand by the Huntington Beach defense. Maybe the defense can inspire the offense to march down the field here, although they've got a long way to go. Was that Tony Austin with the ball that time? I believe it was. Yes, it was. So that was a good defensive uh, effort there on the part of Huntington Beach, and they take the ball over on downs on about their own two-yard line, so they must be careful here, get something going. Tomano's back in at quarterback. 
and he hands the ball off to Larkin on a quick hitter up the middle. There's flags all over the place. I believe we've been told by some people here that it's tomato, not tomato. But you say tomato, and I say tomato. You say ketchup, <laughs> I say ketchup. <laughs> but I believe we're going to pronounce his name tomato, right? Tomato. Tomato. Got it. Maybe. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's doing a great job. He's back at quarterback again. That's Donnie Tomeno at quarterback for Huntington Beach on this play. And it's a fumble, and I believe Huntington Beach has fallen on it and will looks like Tomeno. Tomeno recovered his own fumble there. Bringing up a third down situation. We've got four minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the third quarter of the Los Alamitos Huntington Beach game. I am Don Sinclair along with Mike Berline bringing you the action on HBTV3's Game of the Week. And we are also telecasting in Los Alamitos over television channel three. Most of the evening. Huntington Beach third down. Handoff, I believe that's to that's Jason Lachlan. Jason Lachlan Number with the 36. ball, and he gets a few more yards grudgingly against that very, very strong Los Alamitos defense. Let's not forget that Huntington Beach won only one game last year. This year, they've already got three victories. They're shooting for a fourth. They've got one more game next week. It's a hunting situation here, but uh, they've progressed, and they're still trying to progress with each play. And they're still fairly a young team. Donnie Tomano back to punt. Good snap and a good line drive kick. Trying to get a roll on it. So it, was, it was an effort there to be picked up. Ryan Gregnano. By Ryan Gregnano attempted but missed it and then that has to be blown dead because he touched it and the ball was on the ground. So that'll put the ball on about the 38 yard line, 36 yard line of Huntington Beach and it'll be first and 10 for Los Alamitos. You know, one guy that we haven't seen in the uh, multiple eye offense for the Oilers is Javon tonight. That's Federick back in at quarterback. Another hit right up the middle to number 11. Still on his feet. Got a first down, five yards. That's De Devon Griffin again with the ball. And he's picked up another first down for Los Alamitos. Blistering quickness by Griffin on that play. All he needs is a crack. He exploits it and uh, makes his offensive lineman uh, look good there. But they've been making him look good all night. Cheerleaders still cheering on the Huntington Beach Oilers, and there's still a good crowd here from Huntington Beach. Federick quick to his tight end, number 94. It's number 84. 84. Yeah. I've got to get my glasses fixed there. Ryan Dunbar. Wide receiver, I believe his second catch in the night. And it appears to be another first down. And Dunbar is only a junior, so one can only think that uh, with the graduation of uh, Guinness and Hartley, he might get some more balls next year. They're checking off at the line of scrimmage, changing the play. Federick back. Still with a good rush, good rush. And they finally, got Huntington Beach. A good rush led there by number 52, Matt Peterson. Chad in Jenkins. In there on the tackle. Chad Jenkins, 57, cuts through there as well as Matt Pastilli, number 48. Federick dropping back the southpaw. His receiver's not open. And there it is, number 57, Chad Jenkins. So that puts the ball back to make it second and 16 for Low South. Fake handoff and a blind rollout this time by Federick. Looking for a receiver and wide open in the end zone Sean is Sean Stein. 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 And another touchdown for Los Alamitos. And again, they've got lots of ways to, to hurt you. Now here's an example of the depth. 
This is Federick, a quarterback, throwing to another quarterback. Stein is a junior quarterback, probably has not seen much action this year, looking, saying, hey, coach, let me play. Put me in, coach. So uh, he says, well, you can play wide receiver if you want. So what does he do? He goes out, contributes with six points. Up and good for the extra point. And with a minute and 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter of Los Alamitos Huntington Beach. It is Los Alamitos 42 and Huntington Beach 6. I think uh, Mr. Stein on that play stole a page out of Campbell's playbook. Campbell, wide receiver, plays quarterback, jumps back and forth. Uh, Los Alamitos had their answer, and his name was Sean Stein. Could very well be the quarterback next year for Los Al. 6'3", 210 pounds, a big, big quarterback. You know, the quarterbacks playing receiver, that's happening more and more as we look at the Huntington Beach cheerleading squad that's done such a fine job tonight. We mentioned last week that uh, Randall Cunningham has taken some snaps with Philadelphia since he's not playing anymore as a quarterback. Uh, Rob Johnson, former Orange County Athlete of the Year, played some wide receiver as a junior. A deep kick by Phillips, and now picked up by Eric Yang, and he's still on his feet, but now swarmed under by Los Alamitos, and we're starting to see a lot of white jerseys from Los Al. It looks like they're beginning to do some substituting. Their, um, their hat uh, logo is an L.A. Yes. Looks like L.A. Well, my logo on my high school team in Pennsylvania was almost identical to that. It was a joint of, joint, uh, of two small towns called Lansdowne Alden. But our logo was almost identical. And my letter was looked just like that, too. <laughs> he started For what it's done. worth, he started something. <laughs> Okay, it's first and 10 for Huntington Beach. And that's a good hole up the middle there. And that's Lachlan, and he's fights for some good yards, and he's across the 15 to about the 17-yard line. He's still fighting. A good hole, and Lachlan made the most of it. His first uh, would-be tackler, he put a good move on, eluded him, and advanced the ball for more yardage. That was almost a first down. That's going to bring up a second and one. That right side for Huntington Beach has been open most of the evening when they've gone that way. 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And that's Donnie Tomeno at quarterback. Quick hitter again. This time, I believe he may have gotten the first down. And if he did, that's amazing because the first contact he had was with his own offensive lineman who was being pushed backwards by the surge of the low Sal defensive line. But where the ball's marked, it looks like a first down. I don't know whether they're gonna make, have a measurement or, ah, measurement. I was trying to call that from here, but. And we've got one of our trusty young men helping out with the ball retrieval. Been working very hard. I'm sure he looks up to some of those players on the field and envisions himself in one of those uniforms in the not too distant future. And that time comes very, very quickly and then goes away very quickly too. Enjoy these times. Even if the score is 42 to six, enjoy these times anyway. They, this is the best time of your life at high school. One of the better times of your life anyway. Okay, it's, we're coming up right near the end of the, of the third quarter, and it looks like we're gonna end that on, at the third quarter with the score, Los Alamitos 42, Huntington Beach six, Dad used to call me his little deficit spending daughter till I took him to Lou Webb's all new Toyota Buena Park. Lou Webb's Toyota Buena Park really isn't a class by itself. More cars, incredible savings, and really polite people. I got a new Camry for a lot less than I budgeted. Dad was proud. Yeah, Dad bought a new Supra, but he and Mom needed something to tow behind the motorhome. Old fashioned value for a new generation. Saving is a walk in the park. Lou Webb's all new Toyota Buena Park. 
For all of your business and estate planning needs, see Joe Partiz. I'll show you how to set up private pension plans with a 7% tax-free return. Pay your estate taxes at a discount. Earn over 10% on your annuities. Get the best rates on life insurance and find affordable health insurance for employers and individuals. Call Joe Partiz at 310-799-8540. You owe it to yourself to have the very best. Orange County Container Corporation is a leading manufacturer of corrugated boxes for all your industrial shipping and storage needs. We have four plants to serve you in L.A. and Orange Counties, San Diego, and Mexico. We also offer multicolor point-of-purchase displays and a complete line of paper products. Call Orange County Container today at 714-826-8881 or 818-333-6363. Michael Federick, president of Orange County Container, wishes good luck to the Griffins. Come to Fiorito's Italian Restaurant, serving great Italian food since 1964. Enjoy Fio's famous thin crust pizza and world's best blue cheese dressing. Fiorito's features only the freshest ingredients and offers a wonderful menu of homemade Italian favorites, including lasagna, matacotti, and cannelloni. Delicious veal, chicken, and fish entrees offer the best of regional Italian cooking. Fiorito's Italian Ristorante is located at 1101 Los Alamitos Boulevard. Open for dinner seven days a week. Fiorito's, family dining at its very best. There's a place in my heart for a sunrise, for the late afternoon feel of a summer's breeze. And there is a place in my home where my heart is always full. Felux, roof windows and skylights made to draw you closer to the world outside and closer to yourself. Because Velux knows the most important world you live in is the one you call your own. Deadlines have no mercy. Thankfully, you can modem a document to Sir Speedy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sir Speedy will print, copy, bind, and deliver your work when and where you need it. Call your nearby Sir Speedy and be part of the printing, copying, digital network. Sir Speedy Printing is located at the corner of Bloomfield and Cerritos in Los Alamitos. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and open Saturday. Visit Green Street Interiors and make your holiday shopping a pleasant experience. We have gifts for every member of the family and decorations to make your holiday festive and unique. Enjoy a peaceful shopping experience away from busy, crowded malls. And remember, the gift wrapping is free. Green Street Interiors is located at 11132 Los Alamitos Boulevard in Los Alamitos. Or call us at 598-8694. Uh, great interview, Gary. Okay, we're just getting underway with the fourth quarter of the Huntington Beach Los Al game. And Huntington Beach with the ball. And that was Jason Lachlan who went up the middle and got nowhere. So it's going to bring up a third and one for Huntington Beach on about their own 19-yard line. You know, Don, Gary looked quite at home with those guys. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> he may have them back. He may have them back for a second interview. I think they're in his karate class. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that? Oh, okay. That answers that. Well, we, these are then these are mascots you don't want to mess with, right? That's right. <laughs> and they're measuring for the first down. Looks to be a little short. And they're saying inches. Fourth and inches, and they're sending in what appears to be the punting unit, but with George Pasco, you never can tell. Absolutely. Well said, Don. And when you say punting, you're talking about Mr. Tomeno. Ife Olahante is the back to receive, and it bounces, and the ball is going to be blown dead around the third 
35 yard line of Huntington Beach. That was not a kick that uh, I'm sure he'd like to have that one back and try it again. Number That's 67, Ryan DuBose is actually the person for the Oilers who downed the ball. I'm going to say that name again correctly. It's Ife Ohalite. I agree. That's one of the more challenging ones we've had this season. We, we knew by the fourth quarter we'd get it down. <laughs> okay, LaSalle will take the ball first and 10, and they're sitting on Huntington Beach's 35, just uh, inside the 35-yard line. And we do now have a new quarterback, Sean Stein. And that handoff is the number 21, a new number for us. And he's running around left. That's Jason Wimbish with the ball, and he's picked up at Los Alamitos first down. And it looks like we're starting to have substitutions from Los Al, and the substitutions have picked off, picked up right where the, other, the first team has left off. We're going to take another look at Wimbish's run, a 5'11", 185-pound junior. And this is what we were talking about earlier, the football factory at Los Al. The seniors who've had great careers graduate, and then you get a Wimbish who uh, looks like a veteran back there and he's going to have many more great days ahead next year. Little mix up this time again to Wimbish and he is stopped. He, he literally he ran into uh, to Sean that time when on the handoff and it gave a chance for the Huntington Beach defense to react and they stopped the ball and that'll bring up a second and 10. There was no gain on that play. One of the benefits of having such a talented team allows you to get ahead in the game and give these reserve players a lot of playing time so they develop quicker. It's a sideline pass. Didn't quite catch the number. 28. Number. Rory Roberts. Roy Roberts, who is a 5'8 junior. junior, 151 pounds. So that was just a little flare pass out to the left. And he picked up the rest of that yardage on his own, which was about six yards. And that's going to bring up a third and four for Los Al. And we're seeing more and more white jerseys, meaning a lot of substitutions and new numbers on each play. And a quick hitter across the middle, up close to the first down, is Wimbish. We'll just have to wait and see. Appears to be a little bit short. Now, after tonight, Los Al will be playing their final game of the regular season at Marina. And then it's definitely on to the CIF playoffs. They're fighting tonight for a piece of the crown for the Sunset League, hoping that Esperanza will suffer a defeat. It's now fourth down and about one for Los Al, and they're going to go for it with eight minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the game. He was initially stopped at the line of scrimmage, but with extra effort, he squirted forward and appears to have gotten the first down for the Griffins. Not afraid to get down and get the tough yards. Looking ahead to Huntington Beach's final regular season game, it does not get any easier. They conclude at Fountain Valley next week. And we'll be there. And Fountain Valley, of course, is playing Esperanza tomorrow. They've got a tough ball game. It's first and goal. Wimbish. And he's tackled in the backfield. This time the defense is held. Good defensive effort on the part of the linebackers and linemen of the Oilers. Looking ahead to next week, as you mentioned, uh, we will be at that Huntington Beach Fountain Valley game. This game will be broadcast on Friday, November 3rd at 1 p.m., Saturday, November 4th, 7.30 p.m., and Sunday, November 5th at 1 p.m. It is second and eight. Little pitch out to Wimbish around the left side. He's got some running room. And he gets to the corner, and it's touchdown, Los Al. Lest we forget about the speed of Wimbish, he did about three consecutive runs up the middle, trying to, uh, to uh, use, use some power moves. And here he gets outside with uh, some good blocking. And then it's all Wimbish into the corner of the end zone for six points. Nice block by number 86, Chris Millard. 
wide receiver out there leading the way, allowing Wimbish to get into the end zone. Extra point try, and it's up and good, and we've got a flag on the extra point. David Van Horbeck has been very, very close to blocking some of these extra points, and he got a little too close that time and went into the kicker, and they're going to be probably assessing that penalty off on the kickoff. So the Oilers will be taking the ball again deep in their own end zone. So it's been a, a long evening so far for the Oilers. They've they've tried everything they've, they can. They've got uh, trick plays. I still see a lot of effort. A lot of I still see some smiles down on the sidelines here. A few of the players, they're not dejected. They know they're up against a, a very, very good, good football team. And Huntington Beach has had their share of injuries this year that have kept them from being as competitive as they would have liked to have been. And they're still a young team. They're playing a very, very strong team and playing with a lot of class tonight. I have to say both teams are, both clubs. And I'll tell you, Huntington's got some very supportive fans. They're all still here. Yes. They're very proud of their family members, their children, their brothers. And uh, they're putting forth the effort, and they're learning something tonight. You learn from playing it. Good teams, and they'll be back next year. Well, Huntington is one of those. Is one is this school with the I would say the richest tradition of football, and that it is continuing here this evening, win or lose. I know Gary would really like to get in this game, but I'm not sure they're going to let him. He's actually walking down on the field now, trying to get close. Maybe he's going to go ask the coach if they can put him in. Now his eligibility is all used up, isn't it? That's the problem. <laughs> Now they're kicking it off actually in Huntington Beach territory. They'll go in the end zone for a touchback, and Huntington Beach will put the ball in play first and 10 on their own 20 with seven minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the game with Los Alamitos leading 49 to 6. And we'll see if Huntington Beach does anything different here, if they do any more substitutions uh, or if they stick with their game plan. Don't expect him to roll over. We'd like to see some more points from Huntington Beach tonight. That's Donnie Tomeno, who is now at quarterback for Huntington Beach. Off tackle. This time, the ball carrier was Eric Yang, and he didn't go anywhere and was, and was brought down behind the line of scrimmage the by Losal. The reason he didn't go any place was Andy Bautista, 6'1", 183-pound senior. Nice stop on the play. There was no gain on the plays. That'll bring up a second and 10. Intended for Billy Campbell. Goes in and out of his hands. And that'll bring up a third down. May have been a little bit too hot to handle. Tamano was showing his uh, arm strength on that play. Now Tamano's a junior. And he's listed as a quarterback and does the kicking for Huntington Beach. Maybe the coach is beginning to think about the future and wants to give this young man a chance to settle in at QB maybe and have an opportunity and he's playing against a real difficult team to get your good pass and a great reception there by Van Horbeck. And I believe Huntington Beach is real close to another first down. And let's not forget that Van Horbeck will be back next year as well at the receiver position. So will the other starting wide receiver, Masuda. So uh, this could be a very good combination for them next year. We're going to watch it again. I've been very impressed with Tamano's throwing tonight. He's got good accuracy and good arm strength. He throws with a lot of confidence, moves around well in the pocket, and uh, takes advantage of those fleet foot wide receivers for the Oilers. That was Dave Picani, I believe, for uh, Losal, who made the, the tackle on that last play. It's fourth down. Huntington Beach was going. I believe they did the hard count, and if that flag is, we'll have to wait and see. 
I don't see any players trying to help the ref out at this point. It's a major conference. Let's take this opportunity to mention those uh, Oiler offensive linemen again. Matt Peterson at center, Mike Du Bois, Kyle Gerwell, Kyle Pett, and Justin Spiegley. That's an offsides for Los Al. And that gives Huntington Beach first down on their own 35 yard line. They'd like to get something going here. First and 10, Huntington Beach. It's a pass out here to Van Hornbeck, and he's got the ball out of bounds. It's a reception and a first down for Huntington. That was actually Dennis Masuda on that play. Oh, Dennis Masuda, I'm sorry. Well, that just gives us a chance while they're moving the chains to once again, thanks our underwriters. Huntington Beach TV3 game is brought to you by Rainbow Disposal, Gustafson Brothers, DeLillo Chevrolet, Huntington Beach Fire Med Program, we're going to get a chance to see Masuda with a great catch there. And that's a first down for Huntington Beach. Just in bounds. It's a rollout by Tomeno. Ball out here to Partusek, and he's knocked out of bounds. And to finish off that list of underwriters who we want to thank for bringing you HPTV3 game, and that's the Independent. Mandic Motors, the Huntington Beach Hospital and Medical Center, and GTE, the Everything Pages. Jeff Bartuzek on that carry, and Huntington Beach seems to have something going. And Bartuzek's mom just told us, that's my son. <laughs> Very proud of him. She's right down here in front of us, and she got the mom. They're well, we know he did good because she was up cheering. We got four minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the game, and Huntington Beach has got something going. It's a reverse. It's David Van Hornbeck with the ball on the reverse. He's got the ball back and is up to about the 45 yard line of Los Al, and he's knocked out of bounds. I knew that one had to come out sooner or later. I applaud Coach Pasco for doing it, and uh, they picked up a few yards on the play. He was knocked out of bounds there by number six, Wayne Campbell, for Los Alamitos. We said they wouldn't quit. There is a silver lining in this game tonight. We're seeing the future Oiler offense at work. A lot of the offensive linemen will be returning. I'm talking about the center, Matt Peterson, and also about Kyle Gerwell. It's third and five for Huntington Beach, and they've got something going here at the end of, near the end of this game. Tomeno back with a sh short pass across the middle, and it's re received there by David Masuda, Dennis Masuda, right at the first yard marker, and there's a flag that was thrown in there late, so we'll have to wait and see what, what the call is. Another fine throw by Tomano. Very nice. Threading the needle. There you see Masuda's numbers. Note that uh, 11th year junior. And they're saying the, the penalty is holding against Los Al, which is going to move the chains and give Huntington Beach, I believe, the second best field position they've had this evening, except for that very first drive where they came down and scored with their first possession. They're now down in the 35-yard line of Los Al and have something going here with three minutes and 18 seconds left to go in the game. Tomeno faking the handoff, keeping the ball, throwing it out here to Bartusek, and he's got the ball almost back to the line of scrimmage. I believe they'll mark that. And that'll bring up a second down. And Bartusek will be back again next year as well. 5'9", 190-pounder, doubles as a linebacker as well as a running back. Talented young bar ball player with a lot of desire. Let's not forget about the senior leadership we're seeing here on the Oilers squad. These guys are paving the way for next year's team. They've shown improvement this year, and their spirit will be carried over next year. 
Roll out left. Pass across the middle and complete to Campbell. He's got the ball still on his feet, fighting for the first down. He's up to about the 30-yard line. And when you talk about senior leadership on the Oiler team, you're talking about Mr. Campbell, Bill Campbell. We're going to watch that play again. 6'4", 205 pound, wide receiver tight end, goes high. He needed every inch of that 6'4 frame, and now he's going to run with it. For a guy who was throwing the ball earlier in the game, he sure can catch the ball very nicely, too. Had he not had to go up so high, he would have had better footing and might have been able to elude some of those defenders there. Eric Yang, single setback for Huntington Beach. It's third and five. Roll out to the left. The ball intended for David Van Horbeck, and I believe that the defensive player hit him just a little bit too soon and so did the referees and there are a few, few yellow flags yes that's defensive we're going to watch this pass again. interference and I think every referee threw a flag on this play <laughs> the ball was there and so was the defender the referee says a little bit early and uh, if I had had a flag I would have thrown it too Don we've got a minute and 36 seconds left to go Huntington Beach has got the ball moving and they're down on the 15 yard line. The question of this game has long since been determined. And the offense needs this. Tamano will probably get more playing time next week. It's first down. Roll out to the left. Looking, throws the ball down, and it's picked off by Los Alamitos. And he doesn't have anybody that's going to stop him. He's right down the sideline, number 23. Going, going going that may be a 99 yard return by number 23 David Bacani Bacani for Los Alamitos but we that was an absolutely flag. terrific run that Bacani will be looking for oxygen at the end of this run <laughs> and I'll tell you what nobody wants that flag to be against the Oilers more than Bacani he does not He's want his efforts to go in vain Stepped Not a bad throw again. He stepped right in front of the intended receiver, Masuda. And now it's just a sprint down the sidelines. He's got some help initially. You see number one with a great block there. That's Ojalite Ife. And uh, number 23, Dave Bacani, sees Hader in the end zone. Touchdown, Losal. Well, it's not a touchdown. While you were doing the review there, it appears that there was a penalty. I think I saw a clip down here, so they're going to call that ball back. And, but the interception stands. There was a clip that took place, and Losal will get the ball first and 10 on the 35-yard line. And we believe to have another sophomore quarterback who's come in for Losal. I believe we have a whole new uh, substitution for Los Al and Huntington Beach has called timeout with a minute and 19 seconds left to go in the game. The new quarterback appears to be the sophomore Zach Blazak. So uh, they've, they've got uh, quite a few quarterbacks strung out here. It looks like Blazak will be backing up Stein next year. Maybe he can play some wide receiver. Maybe Stein can teach him how to catch his own passes. Well, these guys have been standing on the sideline the whole game, and they're ready to get, get ready to get to work right now. I'd like to get something moving. Hand off the backfield this time. There's no no gain and, and stop there by right. Huntington Beach's Chad Jenkins, a 6'3", 220-pound sophomore. So it looks like that Pasco's done the same thing, and he has substituted his sophomore is in here against Los South sophomore, so everybody's getting a chance to play tonight. Yeah, I, I believe that's what he's done. He's, he's, he has substituted quite a few players. So that's Zach Blazak for Zach Blazak, number Los five. Al, number five, with a chance to run the Los Al team. And he takes takes the ball back and goes to one knee and the clock continues to move and we're getting right close now to the end of the 
He's going to have to perfect that going down to one knee move. Uh, when your quarterback blows out, <laughs> he went you, down and got back up used again. to doing that. Uh, he got back up and started running. We may not see another play running tonight. It's a third and 12, but I believe that that's going to be the end of the ball game, and we won't see another play for the, this this game. And the game is over with Los Alamitos dominating in this game as we had expected early on a powerhouse of a football team have come in and just done a done a terrific job they're a super team they're they are definitely going to be moving along in CIF and again here's one of my favorite parts of the game after another Hartford battle fought battle we have a lot of the, the players congratulating one another and whoever started this pro this uh, tradition here I'm very happy to see it I didn't do this when I was playing and I think this is a terrific way to, to end a football game that's been fought so hard well again uh, it'd be hard pressed to uh, remember the last time I saw a team as talented as this Los Al team I second your sentiments about uh, their chances in the playoffs uh, they should go quite a ways do very well I wouldn't be surprised to see them with a championship trophy uh, but on the other side, the Huntington Beach Oilers uh, showed a lot of pride tonight and showed good things to look forward to next week in their game against Found Valley and next season. They've got a lot of returning players coming back, and they can learn from a football factory like Los Alamitos. I think it, that the Huntington Beach team really doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. They played very, very well. They were just were a, a team from Los Al who is very, very strong, very, very deep. And it's really nice to see a high school team of with this caliber. I've really enjoyed watching Los Al play this game and the precision. And you know that's a lot of work that's been going on by their coaching staff and their players to have that almost, I don't hate to say this, but kind of a machine uh, way of doing things. Well, I think that uh, the Huntington Beach players showed a lot of maturity tonight. They uh, went out, gave it their best, but they understand uh, what they were up against tonight. Uh, they weren't intimidated, but they put forth their best effort, and uh, they came up a little bit short on the scoreboard, but uh, they know that they gave their best. They can look themselves in the mirror, and uh, they will move on and learn from this experience. Well, Mike, that's the uh, been an exciting game, and I'm Don Sinclair, and I want to thank Mike Berline, and we thank you for watching HBTV3's Game of the Week, where the final score was Los Alamitos 49 and Huntington Beach 6. We'll see you next time. HB TV3 Sports. your home and building needs, turn to Bar Lumber. We've been serving Southern California since 1903. We're the specialists in hardware, paint, doors, windows, and power tools. We have over 6 million feet of lumber, plywood, redwood, treated lumber, and a complete milling service. Windows and doors reveal the character of your home. Come home to quality with Anderson Windows at Bar Lumber. So come on down to Bar Lumber, your friendly home improvement center, with convenient hours and now 11 locations to serve you.